Hello, everyone, and welcome to Scratch Challenge number eight. In this Scratch Challenge, we are going to work on random numbers. So random numbers have a lot of different applications within uh, programming, and can be used in a lot of cool ways. So I thought I'd just start by showing you a uh, first way. And uh, just to start for context, I thought I'd show us the Cartesian grid or the xy axes um, just to explain. So here's our stage. The dimensions are it's 180 pixels from or steps from the middle to the edge here and negative 180 or 180 pixels down. It's 240 over here and negative 240 over there. And I'll explain for a second or I'll explain in a couple of seconds why that's important. So I'm going to go over Scratchy the Cat. One thing that happens in a lot of games is sometimes things move around randomly. So let's say we want Scratchy just to glide around uh, the stage randomly. What I'm going to do is I'm going to just do when a green flag clicked. Bring enough forever, and we'll get Scratchy to glide. So remember, we said there's two pieces of information for where Scratchy will glide to. So if I pull him away, and I click this, he glides back to his spot. So there's an X and a Y. So I'm going to pick a random number between positive 240 and negative 240. So from 240 to negative 240. So that's going to be for my x. I'm going to redo the exact same thing. This is going to pick a random number between 180 and negative 180. There we go. So now when I do this, what should happen is every time we run this, Scratchy should glide to a different random place. But instead of me having to click on it to get it to go, just out of forever. And I'm also going to make it so that way Scratchy pauses for a half second in that new spot. So now when I click the flag, it moves around randomly around the screen. Sometimes short distance, sometimes long distance. But it moves around randomly around the screen. So this is one way to get Scratchy to move around randomly. Another thing you do is instead of doing it that way, you could, instead of picking a glide to, you can have them just appear in all these different spots. So I'll just change that to the X, slide that down to the Y, pull that out. And now he just pops in those different places. Go, go, go. You can slow it down a little bit by making him pause a little bit longer in each spot. I'll wait two seconds. So these are different ways to kind of make an object move randomly around the screen. I should just fly around real quick. There he is. So in this challenge, we're not going to be actually making Scratchy move around. Um, and we're going to use random numbers to do some math. I know. So what we're going to do is we're going to make an addition, multiplication, subtraction, or division game. It's up to you. What you're going to do is you're going to make a question answer game for Scratchy the Cat. So let's get started here. So I'm going to guide you through a little bit of the creation just to help you out, and then you will be able to kind of make it a little bit more complex or difficult. You can change up the way you want it to work, but this will be all up to you. So I'm going to make it so that way every time we click on Scratchy, a new question is asked. So to do that, we're going to start with the event of when this sprite is clicked. So we're going to want to be able to use our random number. So we're going to pick a random number. But a smart way to do this is actually store this information in a safe spot. Well, you're going to use a, a variable for this. So I'm going to make a variable, and I'm going to call this variable random number. So now we've got variable random number. And we're going to set random number to a number. And let's make that a number between, we'll make this an addition game. So we'll make this nice and simple. We'll make it the addition facts up to 20, so 1 to 20. So set random number to pick a number between 1 and 20. So now when I click on this, you see every time I click, a new random number is picked. So I'm just clicking on Scratchy, and new random numbers are picked each time. Beautiful. It's working. So the next thing I'm going to do is bring in an ask. Let's ask a question. Well, let's think for a second. Let's maybe do, let's do a what is, we'll do a plus 7 fact. So we'll ask, and we're going to have to use a join to do this. So the sentence I'm kind of imagining is we're going to ask a question like, what is 7 
plus, please note, I need to put a little space there. What is seven plus random number? So what is seven plus number? And to make this a good sentence, add another join in and add a question mark. So what is seven plus random number? So now we're going to turn that into our ask. So now what should happen is let's just click on it. Scratchy, what are you doing here? So now we got what is seven plus and a random number of 12. Fantastic, this seems to be working so far. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna wanna do a another variable. And this variable is gonna store the answer we get. So what we're gonna do is we want someone to store the answer. And so we'll, in our variables, we'll make a new variable. We'll call this user answer. So set user answer to the answer they give. So now we'll store the information given to us in a safe place. Now you're going to need a way to know that they're either going to get the answer right or they're going to get the answer wrong. And when you have these kinds of situation, you're going to want to use a control called an if else statement. And this is an example of an if else statement. So if something happens, you're going to do this. Otherwise, do that. So one of two things is going to happen. They're going to get the answer right or get the answer wrong. So let's deal with it if they're going to get the answer right. The first thing we haven't figured out is what is the right answer. So to figure out what the right answer is, we're going to make another variable. We'll call this the right answer. And so we're going to have to do a bit of math. We're asking them to do something called addition. So I'm going to look here at my operators, and I'm going to use the addition operator. I know because I said right here that we are doing a seven. If I enter in a seven right here. So what is seven plus random number? So now we bring in a random number. And now we're gonna go to our variable and we're gonna call it, we're not gonna, we're gonna call, or we're gonna set right answer to what is seven plus random number. We're going to want to do this right after we make a random number, so we know the right answer right away. And now we're going to check what the user says to the right answer. So what we need to do is we're going to check to see if, so we're going to say if the user answer, if the user answer equals the right answer, which we've calculated up here, Wonderful. So if the user answer is the same as the right answer, then, well, let's say something like Yippee or Yahoo. <clears throat> and once you have that uh, back, we'll just kind of get that in there. So let's see. Add a little sound in, play drum, get a little. Instead of us, that one will go with a cowbell. Perfect. So now when they get the answer right, it says yippee, nicely done for two seconds. And then we get a sound of the drum. And then we have to have some feedback if they get the answer wrong. So we'll go back to looks and say something like, sorry. That is not. We we'll to make this really good. What we can do is we can also give the user feedback of what the answer, what the right answer really is. So we can use our join. So we could go with something like, sorry, the correct answer is, the correct answer is, um, and then you go to data, and we'll bring in our right answer here, and we'll get that to be dropped in with our say. So now it's going to say, sorry, the correct answer is. So what we'll do now is we'll just run that and see if it works. So click the green flag, or sorry, we click on the sprite. So it starts out by having our random number generated, puts it in right there at 19. Then it takes 17 and adds it to 19 to get the correct answer of 26. So let's go through and test 
and get the correct answer first. So we'll say the correct answer is 26. Press enter, collects my answer and compares the user answer to the right answer. I heard the um, drum play there for a second and we know we got the answer right. This time we'll try it again. New random number generated, puts it in right there. It says what well, seven plus five makes it twelve. So let's get the wrong answer and see if we go over here into the wrong answer category. So let's say we think that answer is uh, fifteen. Sorry, the correct answer is twelve. Awesome. So that works exactly like we wanted to. So if we get the answer right, it goes down into here. If it gets the answer wrong, then it gives them the right answer. Uh, gives them the feedback with the right answer. So for really want to make this to be good, we want to make sure that this information here isn't seen by users when they're doing the activity. So remember to unclick these little check boxes and that hides all the uh, variables that we're collecting. So now the right answer, the user answer, and the random number can't be seen. Let's make this a little bit more fun. We'll add a backdrop and uh, let's make Scratchy the Cat do some math underwater because I think that sounds like a lot of fun. So there we go, Scratchy's doing some math underwater. Um, so for, the, um, for this challenge, I want you to use what you've learned here, and I'd like you to make your own math game. So to do this, you're going to go into the operators. And so you can pick to continue uh, going with uh, the operator of addition, but you can choose to go with subtraction. You could go with this uh, one that looks like a star, or the asterisk is multiplying, and the backslash is dividing. So these are your operators for subtraction, multiplication, division. So you can remake this activity for um, subtracting, multiplying, or dividing. The other thing you can also do is you can also make this more tricky or more complex by instead of having this to be a set number like seven, you can bring in a second random number. And that second random number can be random number one uh, plus random number two. And then you can have your game be a little bit more complex. Um, I hope that uh, you have some fun with this. I hope that you know maybe you pick some different ranges for your numbers, uh, but also make it reasonable and possible for yourself and for the user. Um, I look forward to seeing your math games and make sure to tag your work with TLDSB code. And uh, I look forward to your work. Good luck and have fun.